Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're continuing our Gulf Coast tour. This is USS Lexington. In today's video, we're going to talk about some of the aircraft carrier bits of this ship that we don't get to talk about on Battleship New Jersey. So obviously, an aircraft carrier's primary reason for being is to launch and recover aircraft. And for fixed wing, non-vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, that means you've got to physically launch it and have some way of arresting it when it lands. So in this video, we're gonna look at the steam catapults and the arresting wires. And we're gonna start here with the arresting wires. An Essex class aircraft carrier, like many modern American carriers, has four arresting wires. I've heard it said that landing an airplane on an aircraft carrier is the most difficult thing a pilot could possibly do. You're trying to hit a postage stamp in the middle of the ocean while going extremely fast in your jet aircraft. What's more, as you come in for your landing approach, you've got to hook one of four wires to stop you or else you're going to shoot right off the uh, deck. If it's an angled deck carrier like Lexington was modified to be, you might have enough room to take back off again. If it is a uh, straight deck carrier like the Essexes were originally built to be, like all the World War II carriers, uh, then if you don't make that perfect landing, you've got some issues. Now, aircraft carriers do have nets that they will put up approximately amidship, uh, particularly on straight deck carriers so that if you miss your cables, you get caught by the net rather than running into the deck park at the forward end of the flight deck. Uh, and modern carriers that do have angled decks will also have nets in case there is an issue with your arresting equipment on the way in so you can still be caught. Now, obviously crashing an aircraft into a net uh, leads to a very sudden stop and that is not good for either the air crew, the aircraft, or the ship that is being hit. Uh, it can usually be done safely, but this is a hugely dangerous thing. With the landing gear, uh, you are trying to catch the number three wire. So the number one wire is the first one at the end of the flight deck. If you're able to catch that, it gives you the most give. So you come to the smoothest stop. It's not particularly smooth. Uh, you've got something like 300 feet at the back of a carrier to come from whatever your speed is, 120, 150 knots, down to a dead stop. Uh, so it is going to be uh, a hard landing, but that one gives you the most stop. The problem is that's so close to the back edge of the flight deck, trying to line up on that, you're, you're just as liable to crash into the back of the ship as to hit it. So you don't want to catch the number one line. Uh, likewise, the number two uh, arresting wire is pretty far back as well. The absolute best pilots are going to catch the number three wire. That's a fair distance up the flight deck, but it still gives you enough room to come to, again, a relatively gentle stop. And if you miss the first three, you better hope you hit the number four wire, but that's going to bring you to a real sudden stop. An interesting thing with angled deck aircraft carriers, as you come in to land, you're slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And then just before you hit the deck, you push the throttle all the way forward again so that if you miss those wires, you can take back off again instead of just sliding into the ocean. So uh, you're not doing yourselves any favors slowing down and catching the arresting cable. You're trying to hit that as hard as you can to make sure you can take off again if you miss. Piloting an aircraft is not like riding a bicycle. It's not something that you can just pick up and do again after not practicing for a while. To be an airplane pilot, or in the Navy, you call yourself an aviator. Naval aviators are much more skilled and trained than other pilots because of their ability to land on carriers. Uh, so to be an aviator, you must practice a certain number of hours of flight time every single week. 
so that you can stay sharp on landing and flying and taking off and all these things. It, it is not easy and it is easy to forget. So, so you have to get your quals continuously over your service life. I compared landing on an aircraft carrier to finding a postage stamp in the middle of the ocean. And that's not entirely accurate because a postage stamp doesn't move. Not only is the aircraft carrier sailing at high speed into the wind for most takeoffs and landings, it's also a moving pitching and rolling platform floating on the sea. And when you're landing on an angled deck carrier, you're not coming down straight at the stern, you're coming in at a little bit of an angle. So to help a pilot land on an aircraft carrier, there's a guy named the landing signals officer, the LSO. And this is his equipment. It's been moved up to the flight deck level on Lexington so people can see it. Normally it would be a little bit lower and back aft here. And he's got all this equipment to watch the aircraft coming in and he's got some colored light control equipment. So you might see often in movies like Top Gun, they tell you to call the ball. The meatball is a string of colored lights that you see that uh, if it is green, you are coming in on the proper approach angle, your, your right glide slope. If it is yellow or God forbid red, you're, you're coming in at the wrong angle. And if the LSO can't talk you into the right position, well, then he's going to have to wave you off and tell you to fly over the flight deck instead of trying to land because you might be coming in too low to crash into the stern or too high where you would miss the four arresting cables and maybe even the net and come down at the deck park at the front of the uh, carrier. The forward 211 feet of the carrier are reserved for takeoffs and Lexington currently has two steam catapults to launch aircraft from this position. Some Essex class carriers were built with three, with two up here on the flight deck and one on the hangar deck, but the hangar deck catapult didn't work so well. A cool idea in theory, but uh, in, in practice it, it was never used. So later Essexes like Lexington had it deleted. They only had the two flight deck catapults. Oftentimes you wouldn't even need those catapults because with earlier propeller driven planes that are lighter and have the straight wings for more lift, uh, they, they could just sail the carrier into the wind at top speed and there would be enough wind to create lift in that uh, 200 foot span as the aircraft were taken off. So you just line them all the way up down the deck and they take off one after the other. With larger jet aircraft, that was not the case. And so more powerful steam catapults had to be installed in the 1950s at the same time that uh, the ship received the modifications for the angled flight deck and some other features. Uh, also more powerful arresting cables to stop these heavy jets when they hit the deck. So the steam catapult shoots the plane into the air. There is a guy in a yellow shirt called the shooter. He's the one who is signaling with the pilot on the aircraft, confirming the weight of the aircraft, making sure the steam catapult's all set up right. And then he does the drop on the knee and point and the aircraft takes off. Have you ever gotten the chance to visit an aircraft carrier? There are five that are open as museum ships. Lexington here in Corpus Christi, Intrepid in New York, Yorktown in Charleston, South Carolina, Hornet in Alameda, California, and Midway in San Diego. I've hit four of the five so far, uh, along with the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy, which I got to strip parts off of for New Jersey, but I've never been on an active carrier. Let us know what carriers you visited in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and individuals like yourselves. If you'd like to support the ongoing restoration here on the aircraft carrier Lexington, we've got a link in the description below to their donate page. And you can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel and what we do. Thanks for watching.